Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk about testing 211 mediation models or multi level mediation models using Rockwood's ML Mead macro. Uh, I already talked about 111 models in a previous video, uh, and you can go to this link right here to uh, access it. Um, also, I have a link right here to uh, Rockwood's um, website where you can download a copy of the macro if you haven't already done so. So we're just basically pivoting off of the previous demonstration on 111 models by covering 211 models. So I will include links to uh, my previous video, uh, Rockwood's uh, website, as well as links to the data that we're using and this PowerPoint underneath the video description. So be sure to go to, to uh, underneath the video description to check all that out. Let me also note that the examples in the data for the presentation are based on an open source article. It's at the Plus One website. It's called uh, Linking Colleague Support to Employees Promote a Voice, a Moderated Mediation Model. And for this demonstration, we're not going to be uh, performing moderated mediation. We're just going to be doing a standard 211 uh, mediation analysis. But if you go to this, this link right here, you can actually access uh, the article. You can download it. And the raw data was downloaded from there as well. Um, and this, this right here is just another link to the data that we're using. And I actually have a modified data file uh, for this particular presentation. So again, those links will be provided underneath the video description. So the actual data set contains uh, data on 162 employees uh, measured at level one uh, who are nested within 50 work, 51 work teams. So that's the level two unit. And what we're going to be doing is testing the relationship between perceptions that one's work team or work group is split into subgroups and promote a voice via the mediator uh, psychological safety. So in this model, subgroup form form formation is a group level perceptual construct, and that's going to be the level two predictor. The mediator psychological safety and promote a voice are both measured at level one. So hence the 211 nature of the model. Now it's important to note that we cannot directly test the effect of subgroup formation on psychological safety or promotive voice since it's a level two variable and the other two variables are level one variables. So the strategy for relating the level two predictor across levels is to relate it to the random intercept terms for the mediator and outcome variable using two separate multi-level uh, regression models. Additionally, there's no direct way to test for the mediated effect of subgroup formation on promotive voice via, via psychological safety. So the strategy, nevertheless, is to regress promotive voice onto psychological safety, which is centered within cluster at level one, the cluster means for psychological safety at level two, and again, the subgroup formation level two predictor. So really briefly, before I actually go through showing you how to perform the analysis using the macro, on the left side of your screen, you'll see that we have fixed effects. And you'll see up here, we've got the outcome variable. It says uh, this is basically psychological safety, which is truncated. So that is essentially our uh, mediator variable. And it's being regressed onto subgroup formation. So on the right over here, you can kind of see a conceptual diagram of what's going on. So basically at level one, we have the measurement of psychological safety right here. Um, but we relate subgroup formation to psychological safety via the random intercepts uh, across the clusters for um, that variable. So basically, uh, the intercept term is essentially uh, being treated as a latent variable. So you can see on the left, uh, we, we are, are performing the analysis using the macro, and this is the outcome. On the right, uh, this is basically the same analysis, but performed using uh, just a standard multi-level regression where I'm regressing psychological safety on the subgroup formation. And you'll see that the coefficients are exactly the same uh, with respect to the fixed effects. You'll also see under random effects in the uh, ML Mead output, you can see we have the level one residual estimates right here. So this is the variance estimate for psychological safety. Uh, there's the wall Z value. And that's exactly the same as the variance estimate that, was, that you see on the right. Uh, just performing the standard multi-level regression. And then also you see the variance estimate for the intercepts on the left. 
uh, with the walled Z, and you can see that those values are exactly the same as what we have on the right. So that's essentially the first regression model that is carried out. Um, the second one is ba looks pretty much like this, where we have essentially um, psychological safety at level one, this variable right here, uh, serving as a predictor of promotive voice. Um, but promotive voice is being related to uh, subgroup formation and also a psychological safety uh, group means at level two via its intercepts. So this is essentially the model that is being carried out. And so you'll see on the left with the ML Mead uh, program, this is part of the output again, you can see that we have the within effects for psychological safety right there. Um, and you can see there's our T value and P value and so forth. Um, there's the uh, intercept as well, and you can see that those values um, at level one, there's our intercept uh, right here, and then psychological safety and all of the values in that row are exactly the same. So this is, on the right, is just basically a second multi-level regression where we're regressing promotive voice onto uh, the centered uh, psychological safety variable uh, as well as the group means for uh, psychological safety and uh, the subgroup uh, formation variable. You also see on the left the between effects, so you can see uh, the estimates, uh, the regression coefficients for subgroup formation and psychological safety, and those are the same values that appear on the right uh, when I uh, reran the analysis using um, uh, just a multi-level regression. You can also see, again, the level one uh, variance estimates and level two variance estimates and tests. Those are all exactly the same as what we have on the left. So that's basically the 211 model in a nutshell. So if we uh, go to our next slide right here, you can see that we have the indirect effect, which is calculated. The indirect effect, you can see it says uh, between indirect effect. There is no within indirect effect that is specified, and that's because we're relating um, our subgroup formation to promotive voice all at level two. Um, so you can see right here the indirect effect that's calculated. Uh, there's a p-value for it and a 95% confidence interval here. So you can see that um, the indirect effect, we have a negative, it's a negative coefficient of negative 0 0.0183, uh, but you can see also that it's not statistically significant as the null of zero does not fall between the lower and the upper bound. And just so you know, the calculation of that indirect effect of negative 0 0.0183 uh, is, is done in the following way. It's basically taking this path coefficient right here, that's basically our path A, um, so it's um, essentially uh, this and uh, this within our output, and we're multiplying that path coefficient uh, by the uh, effect. Uh, this is basically cat path B right here for psychological safety, the means um, to the uh, random intercepts. And so in this particular case right there, uh, this is the uh, coefficient that we're multiplying path A by, which is 0 0.086, and again, this is it right here. So that's how the, um, the indirect effect is calculated, and then uh, we are basically using within the macro a Monte Carlo simulation approach to generate the confidence intervals to, to carry out the test uh, of the indirect effect. So let's go ahead and perform the analysis using the macro. So I'm going to go up to uh, Analyze, Mixed Models, and ML Mead for Multilevel Mediation. So I'm going to click on that. And you'll see that I've already been kind of tooling around with this, but I'll reset it. Uh, the first thing to note is at the top where it says data set, that data set number needs to match what's in the actual um, uh, SPSS file that's opened up. So it's not going to be the, uh, the actual SAV file name, but it's actually going to say uh, data set 1, data set 2, data set 3, just whatever the name happens to be. Uh, typically, uh, you'll get more than, it, it, you'll have something other than one if you have multiple data sets that are opened up. So what I need to do right now is to reset this uh, to three. So I'm going to type in uh, data set three. Then I have to point um, the uh, macro basically to a folder on my computer on, um, on a drive. So what I'm going to do is just point it to um, my downloads folder. And um, so I'm going to type in C, then a colon, backslash, uh, users, then backslash, then I'm just going to type in Mike uh, Krausen. That's part of the directory as well. Uh, and then I'm going to type in uh, uh, downloads 
right there. So now I'm pointing to a folder. The next thing I'm going to do is to move team code up to the cluster box right here. And then my Y variable is going to be promote a voice. So I'm going to move this down here to uh, the Y box. And then the next step is going to be to go back up uh, to the top here. And I'm going to uh, get the variable subgroup formation. Uh, you can see it says team level right there. So I'm going to move that over to the X box. So let's go ahead and do that. And then the mediator, which is psychological safety, I'm going to move this box, th this variable over to the M1 box. So under fixed, when I click on this, the first thing to note is that my X variable is occurring all uh, completely between uh, groups or between clusters. So I need to click off of within effects. Now you'll also notice that there are a number of defaults that have been clicked. So we clicked off of one default right now. Um, but the, the main between uh, effects uh, defaults that we need are uh, these right here. So we're going to leave those clicked. So now I'm going to click on uh, continue. Under random, it's got uh, our defaults, and we still want our uh, M1 intercept to randomly vary for the mediator. For that's, that's the first model that's basically being run. So we're going to leave that clicked, and we'll just leave the other defaults clicked. I mean, basically, if you don't include any other predictors uh, in the model, then the defaults basically are just going to be treating uh, the, any of those effects as zero. So now we'll click on continue and then on OK. And so now you can see that we have our output. So there's our fixed effects right there. There's some model fit statistics uh, above. Uh, as well. Um, you, you can see that uh, this is the uh, regression of psychological safety onto uh, subgroup formation. So you have you know the within effects, you only have the uh, uh, intercept estimate right there between effects and there's the regression slope there. Uh, then the second regression model where you've got promotive voice being regressed onto psychological safety and subgroup formation and so forth. Uh, as you scroll down, you can see that we have our box containing the random effects right there. Uh, so the level one residual estimates and then the random effects estimates for level two. Uh, and then down here are the indirect effects that uh, were given. So there's the indirect effect and there's the 95% confidence interval. Um, obviously, it's also uh, possible to carry out um, uh, mediation involving uh, you know two or three mediators. For instance, if I wanted to move felt obligation over as M2 right there, if I run the same analysis, you'll see in terms of the output that uh, now uh, you've got um, actually three regression models. You've got psychological safety regressed on the subgroup formation. You've got felt obligation, the second mediator regressed on the subgroup formation. And then you've got the final model, promotive voice, being regressed onto psychological safety and felt obligation, both at the within level and the between level. Uh, as we scroll down, you can also see that you have the random effects for all three models at level one and level two. And then you've got, uh, a little bit further down, you've got the uh, indirect effects. Uh, so you've got the between indirect effects for psycho psychological safety as a mediator and for felt obligation as a mediator. And both of those were actually uh, non-significant uh, in the model. Then down here, you actually have a test of the differences uh, between those two indirect effects. So if you wanted to test that out, you could certainly do so. There's a 95% confidence interval uh, testing uh, the difference where the null is that there is no difference. So that um, pretty well concludes this video demonstration of running uh, 211 mediation models using Rockwood's uh, ML Mead macro. Thanks for watching.